right, welcome everybody. This is another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are going to talk about not putting instructors on pedestals. This one may upset some people. You know, honestly, every time we say that, I get very little upset. <laughs> I get very little coming in well, from people I, that are upset, because, and that's, that's okay. I think it's because we approach it in such yeah. a way that we just make people think about this. And if you actually think about it, it tends to not offend people as much. I agree. Now, if you want to look for some things to be offended about, because that seems to be part of our culture these days, start at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. It's where all the episodes are. There are transcripts. If you want to think of search terms that would offend you, you can search for those right there. There's a big old search button in the upper right corner. Um, it'll dig through the transcripts and even find something that you can be mad about. But if not, while you're over there, you could also sign up for the newsletter. You could go deeper on episodes. You could fill out the form to recommend a topic or a guest. Now, if you are interested in Whistlekick beyond just this show, go to whistlekick.com. You're going to see all the things that we're involved in because it's more than this show. Now, if the stuff that we do means something to you because we do all this to connect and educate and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world, you can support us by making a purchase, leaving a review, telling friends about us, or contributing to the Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Whistlekick. We give you a bunch of behind the scenes, exclusive content, audio, video, book drafts, you name it, it's all over there. Whatever you contribute, I guarantee you're going to get way more back in value. And that's evidenced by the fact that people don't stop. We, we continue to add more people to the Patreon because we're doing something right. So thank you to all of you who are doing that. Now, okay. instructors on pedestals. Yes. Don't do it. Okay, are we done? And that concludes the episode. Have a great day. <laughs> Of course, it would be why, you know. It, it there's a there's a natural tendency in a when there's a differing uh, when there's a difference in power power dynamic, yeah. That it leads to a few different possibilities, you know, right? Like uh, there's a cliche among instructor student, not just in martial arts, but the romantic relationship, mm -hmm. right? Like that that's something that is is so so cliche, so stereotypical that there are tons of TV shows and movies that have addressed that. Okay. Um, sometimes that power dynamic leads to more of like a cult-like vibe where in an effort to leverage the power, the instructor is getting time, money from students. And we had an episode where I talked to Louis Martin author of the true believers where we dealt with that he wrote a book about it yeah. a really yeah. interesting subject actually a really well-written book if anybody hasn't read it you should check it out it's pretty cool but more so that power differential turns into hey you're great at things that i'm not great at and i look up to you for that mm -hmm. and not every instructor knows how to draw the line and let people know hey this praise that you're heaping on me is over the line. A lot of instructors are really good at saying you are under praising or under respecting me, yeah, you yeah. know, and, and make calling that calling attention to that making sure that the respect is um, the respectful actions because you can't make someone respect you, you can make them act, but those actions are appropriate given the context in the martial arts school. But quite often, people will not push back on that. Now, one of the places where I find most interesting, where I've experienced people who don't need that is, is the show. When I've interviewed guests, you'll probably have noticed in the very early days, I was insistent. Everybody needed a title. And, and you everybody, title. everybody, everybody. And because I was, the story I told them and the story I told myself, honestly, was I was afraid someone would tune in, hear me address you know, some high level martial artists, not by title, and they would freak out mm -hmm. and not watch the show or listen to the show at that time. But in hindsight, it was as much my discomfort in speaking with those people and, and a little bit of imposter syndrome that I didn't feel I deserved mm -hmm. I to be that. there. But now they're like, just call me Bill or Tom. Like they just, they don't care. They don't care. They're not insisting on it. Sometimes they do. And that's fine. I'm always going to treat people respectfully, whether I'm calling them by their first name or their title. You know, it's the same respect yeah. for me. I value them. 
but they push back. It's, an, it's kind of a counterexample to this whole subject. Have you had people in, in your time training that went one way or the other on what seemed to be the right way to handle it? Um, not, not really. Um, I, I was thinking of this, this topic uh, a slightly different way, but mm. that's okay. Okay. Um, in that the, you can be an incredible martial artist and you can be an incredible teacher even and be a bad person. That's where I was going with this. Okay, so we're getting there. We're, we're getting there. But you know me. I, I, need, I, I need a long build up. But I got to define all my terms. And, and so like putting, you know, putting instructors on this pedestal and thinking that they are above, you know, any, any flaw in sure. their personality is, isn't healthy. And I think right. it's important that we discuss that. And um, both as students that we understand that mm -hmm. and as instructors that we be able to recognize when our students might be doing that to us. Absolutely. And, and I've had people do that. You know, I, I show up to events and nobody's called me grandmaster yet, which is great, but I get plenty of people <laughs> calling me, you know, master and, and, and just the, these rep, this, even if it's not entitled, it's just this air of this reverence. And like, I'm Jeremy. Just call me Jeremy. I'm just someone who trains like you. Maybe I can kick better than you, but it doesn't make me a better person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe I can teach you how to kick better, but that doesn't make me a better person. And I think that that's an, a really important thing. But how do we... Is, is it unavoidable to a certain degree? Because some people are gonna end up having personality traits and flaws where they are so desperate for the validation of others that inherently it's going to lead to them accepting and even demanding being placed on that pedestal. Um, I think there are, there are ways to avoid that happening. I, I speak think, on it. Uh, I mean, I think it's as an instructor, I think there's nothing wrong with saying, you know, with having discussions with your class about like, I am not perfect. I don't do everything right. I think it's important that instructors show their vulnerabilities to their students. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying go to the extreme and every class tell your, you know, every, every class you're in, tell your students you're not good. That's not what I'm saying, but like, it's important that your students see you as a person and people have flaws and people make mistakes and that's okay. Let me say it another way. If you don't have things that are flawed, what are you working on as a martial artist? Mm, yeah. Good and question. if you're not working on anything as a martial artist, how are you gonna understand what it's like to be a student? We did a great episode on how to be a good instructor. And one of them is to be a student. I can understand the counter argument that maybe not every instructor needs to have a formally recognized instructor all the time. Sure, sure, sure. Put that aside. If you're a teacher, you should be working on things because how else are you bringing in new information? Even if it's only you're working on your own stuff. If you value knowledge and progress as a martial artist, and if you're an instructor, theoretically you do, you should be progressing as a martial artist yourself. So I hear what you're saying. And I, I think there are plenty of times where people are going to see this coming and they're going to go, yeah, I get it. It feels good, mm -hmm. but I need to be strong enough to, to push back on that. Now, what about, what about the flip side of that? What about being a student? Do we have responsibilities? Like, are, are or is it all on the instructor? No, I think uh, the student, it's, uh, I think a lot of more of the responsibility in this case actually relies on the student, mm. I think, to understand and recognize that this person shouldn't be placed on a pedestal. Mm. I, think, I think it's more our, as a student's responsibility to make sure that that doesn't happen. You know, um, my martial arts instructor is not a life coach. Mm. You know, if I, if I want to get work done on my house for plumbing, I'm not going to go to our mechanic and ask him, excuse me. <coughs> so I'm going to go to a plumber because that's what, that's, that what make, that's the expertise. That makes sense. That makes sense. You know, my martial arts instructor is someone that I'm going to go to, to discuss martial arts stuff. And he's mm -hmm. going to help me with that. Um, the martial arts instructor may not have 
great uh, eating habits. Mm. He might look fine and, and be perfectly in shape, but he might not be the person you want to go to to talk about a fitness regimen or a, you know a health. Could have an habits. eating disorder. Absolutely. Could live on Doritos. Because they're human and they may have flaws. Martial arts instructors are humans. And they flawed. are. I know. Um, I mean, I I can't remember whom it was, but I know one of the the you know pioneers in Okinawa was often known for going down to the red light district and just picking bar fights because they wanted to make sure that their martial arts that they mm. were learning and teaching was was quote real and so would just start picking fights with everybody that's not healthy wasn't that a tosu i i don't know if it was a tosu or choki motobu i don't remember whom it was but i do i i remember this sure. scenario and reading about it and that's not healthy that's not something that i as an instructor would want my students to do so if, but if i do it as an instructor my students are going to think that's an okay thing to do but that's a flaw in me as an instructor. Yeah. So my students shouldn't look at me as. There's no, there's no test that says, okay, you are a grand person and are thus now permitted to dole out advice on any and all mm -hmm. subjects yeah. as a martial arts instructor. Nor is there some switch that flips in your brain when you become an instructor that grants you this universal knowledge. So if, th if that's not happening, then clearly martial arts instructors are flawed. And I, I, I like what you're saying about the kind of the compartmentalization of that respect or the honorific, how, however you want to look at it, that just because they know some things doesn't mean they know all things. Mm -hmm. And we see this happen in faith as well. I, I've, I've seen this in various religious organizations I've been part of that the leader tends to be revered in such a way that some people will look to them for everything. Yeah. And I don't know that that's healthy. It depends on what you do with their advice. Mm -hmm. Now, I think part of the reason a lot of martial arts instructors are being sought out for things that are not martial arts is trust, respect, uh, a perception of thoughtfulness. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the martial arts instructors I know are pretty thoughtful people. They're able to communicate well. I trust them from time training. I like them. I respect them. And thus, I value their opinion. Doesn't mean they're the only person whose opinion they're about. Doesn't mean yeah, that fair. other opinions aren't valid on other subjects. But similar to you, if, if I was to ask you questions about, I don't know, life, relationships whatever you know you're you're not a life coach you're not a therapist no nope. but we've got time in i trust you i respect you mm -hmm. and thus your opinion on a subject would have value to me mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that i'm going to elevate you to the point of saying you know andrew says and so i should do my instructor yeah. says sensei master grandmaster says We're all fallible. Absolutely. We're all human. Yeah. What we're not saying here is that there is a there is a line, and we all know that that line exists. So we might define it differently between healthy respect or reverence mm -hmm. and unhealthy. The difference between honoring what has come before you know, kind of the loose translation of sensei that I really like, one who has come before, and treating someone as a, a demigod. This person can do no wrong because they've been training for this long, or they did this thing, or they fought that person. Or the one that I think is most common today, they learned from this person. Mm, yeah. Just because you trained under someone does not make you better at anything. No. I've trained under some wonderful people. Most of them you've never heard of. That doesn't make my skill any better or, or, or worse. Yep, absolutely. And you can be a, a, a great martial artist and a great teacher and still be a bad person. Yep, we see it all, unfortunately, all the time. Unfortunately. We were talking about an example during a break. Yep. So it is my hope when we do these episodes, because over the years we have tackled respect and ego in the martial arts in a variety of different ways. My hope is is 
that you will think on this subject. If you are an instructor, that you will watch for the behavior coming from some of your students that is over the line, that is treating you in an inappropriate way. And you will find a uh, respectful way to let them know, hey, you're, you're putting stuff on me that I am not comfortable having on my shoulders because it has to start there. Mm -hmm. Because if you build up too much of an institutional culture of people doing that, you can't correct it. It yeah. becomes really hard to wipe that slate. And I've seen it. Okay. On the other side, as the student, if you're doing that, you probably always want to err on the side of caution and maybe be a little more respectful. Sure, sure. But if you never see your instructor push back on that respect for anyone, and you start to notice people are heaping respect and buying gifts and, and doing things that just make you say, huh. If you wouldn't do it for your high school track coach, your tennis golf instructor, yep, yep. if you wouldn't treat other people in these similar positions in that way, it's probably not appropriate for your martial arts instructor. Now, obviously we have some codified things that are differences around bowing and terminology, mm -hmm. but they all come from a place of respect. Yeah. And there are always exceptions to the rule. There are. You know, if I've been training with my instructor for 30 years, there's a, a slightly different dynamic. Things there. are different. Yeah. yeah. You've got to be comfortable with it at the end. Your instructor's got to be comfortable with it. If, if everybody involved in the equation is comfortable, if there is mutual consent mm -hmm. in the way that you're conducting yourself, with them it's all good absolutely doesn't have to work for anybody else anything else no we good? Grand, grandmaster lesniak i think we did it <laughs> <laughs> you said no one had, had uh, called to that yet so i had to be the first i want to vomit <laughs> i don't like that at all that's gross all right i take it back sorry thank you you're welcome okay thanks for watching thanks for listening if you like this stuff Help us out. Buy something. Tell people about something. Patreon something. Review something. Right? Like there's so many ways you can help us out. We're we're putting a lot of time, a lot of effort in. Um, not that you can tell from this background, but there are renovations going on here in this space to bring you more video. Uh, upgrading the the internet connection. We're gonna start doing more video with interviews. Like uh, so much stuff going on behind the scenes. It all costs time. It all costs money. If you value it, I'm not going to demand it. We're not going to put it behind a paywall. But it'd be great if you help. It us is. Out. It is the hope that you will help. So, if you have feedback, let us know. Email me, Jeremy at Whistlekick.com. If you want to talk about me to Andrew and not include me, that's fine. Andrew at Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio.com. Our social media, everywhere you can think of, is at Whistlekick. And I think that's. It for now. Right? Sounds great. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.